Hi, I'm Dennis Gore. I'm a retired game warden for Upson County. And today we're gonna to talk about uh, several different kinds of animals that are in Georgia, but we're gonna start off with nuisance animals. <clears throat> Our largest nuisance animal, the black bear. We do have a lot of black bear in Georgia, but they're mainly going up the river quarters like the Flint River and the Mulgee River and all. And you can find some bears over at Oconee National Forest. But the, the reason they get a bad rap is because they love to eat honey. And he will go up to that beehive and he'll rip the lid off with these big old long toenails. And then he'll stick his head in the honey. Well, we can't do that. Because if we go over there and flip the lid off, what's gonna happen? We're gonna get stung. So if we get stung, we hurt. But the bear is safe everywhere except for around his nose. That's the tender part of him. So when he flips that hive off, the, the lid off the beehive, he sticks his head down in there and he starts munching out, munching out, munching out. And when he gets through eating, he pulls his head up and he runs off through the woods. As the limbs are hitting him, it brushes the bees off of his back. And then when he gets to where he's going, he'll stop and he'll take his paws and he'll rub that honey off his face and lick his paws. But the thing that you gotta worry about the black bear is if you ever see a mama bear and a baby bear. Because if you get near a baby bear, mama's gonna come up with her big old teeth and go, Rawr! oh, that's my hand, I'm sorry. But it will try to get you to get you away from the baby. But like I said, the bear's not a bad animal. He doesn't attack people. He will eat some fish, but he likes nuts, berries. He'll use these claws and roll over trees so that he can eat the grubs on the ground. He likes bugs, but he especially loves fruit. So uh, blueberries, strawberries, uh, maybe persimmons, muscadines. It's fun to sit inside and watch him out the window, but you don't want to go out there and get close to him because he could hurt you real bad. So leave the bear alone. He's not a bad guy. Another nuisance animal. Cut this tree down and it chewed it up. It's called a beaver. His nose was right here, his eyeballs was here, and he had two ears right here. But all that is meaty and you can't keep that because it'll smell bad. But the beaver is a nuisance animal because he likes to cut down trees. But now something, something that a lot of folks don't realize, the reason the beaver cuts down trees is for three reasons. Number one, the beaver is a herbivore. He eats the bark off the trees, he eats plants. So he'll cut the tree down and he'll eat the bark off of it. Can you see the little chew marks on there? Okay. Now, another reason why he cuts the trees is he likes to build himself a home. So he'll be, build a beaver dam or a hut along a flowing creek. Well, farmers hate that because it always floods back where their crops are. But actually, when he does that, he becomes our best conservationist in the woods. Because when he clogs up that stream and it builds that little old water area, he builds homes for other animals. Now, the third reason is a reason most folks don't realize. A beaver chews on trees because his teeth are a lot like our fingernails. But his teeth grow. So the more he chews on trees, the more he wears the teeth down, the teeth don't continue to grow. Otherwise you'd have a saber tooth beaver walking around and he couldn't chew a tree no more. The river otter, they're very curious. That means they're nosy. They want to know what's going on. The otter, he eats fish. That is why he is a nuisance to the farmers. He can get in your farm pond, especially a small pond, and clean it out in no time at all. He will actually outswim the fish, catch the fish in his mouth. He'll go and he'll find a rock or maybe a log or even on the bank and he'll sit on that and he'll eat the fish right then and there. And then he'll go back and swim around. If there's two or more otters in the pond, it's field day. They will chase each other and play tag. He'll come up behind him and poke him and turn around and go the other way. And they'll chase each other. 
they are so fun to watch play. They very, very fast. You know they gotta be fast if they can outswim the fish and catch him. Now another little animal that, that swims in the water. He's also a herbivore. This is a muskrat. He is one of the softest animals. But now he likes to chew on trees too. He will leave some similar to the same marks, but he won't chew on a tree this big. He usually wants a tree smaller than my little finger. And when he gets through chewing the bark off of it, he doesn't build a house with it. He just drops it where it is and goes on. So he's not a bad guy because he doesn't cut down your big trees and he doesn't eat your fish. But what he will do, he will go to the bank and he'll go down under the water and he'll dig him a hole and make him a cave. And when you go walking along the bank, especially if you have horses or cows that are heavy and they step on that, that, that cave area, it can collapse and they can fall and break their leg. You could too, but he's not a bad guy. He's fun to watch. Those are our nuisance animals. Okay, we're gonna start off this time with squirrels and then we're gonna go into animals with rabies. Now a squirrel cannot get rabies. The first squirrel you've probably seen around, the cat squirrel, is you see them out in the yard and they'll run around and play and they talk. They bark at you. They'll <laughs> And normally when they're doing that, it's an alarm. They're letting their buddies know that something's out there. And that tail's going around circles. He's like, right, here they come. Now some get to the good spots. They get to that hole in the tree and they'll go in there and they hide and you can't see them. Others, they'll go up and they get in a nest. And that's pretty safe too. Not like a bird that's got an open part. But then the poor others, they get stuck out on a limb. They will go up a tree and they'll run out a limb and they'll lay down and they'll flatten out about like that and they're hiding. Squirrels have sharp little toenails and they'll claw on that tree. It's funny how they'll go up a tree and they'll come down a tree. They'll jump from tree to tree um, but yet they are animals. And if you get too close and you pick up one that fell off a tree, even a baby, they will bite you. So don't pick them up. Now the squirrel's favorite food is a pine cone. They like to peel the, the leaves back on the, on the pine cone and get to the seed down on the inside. So you may see a lot of these little old cleaned up pine cones everywhere. Now the fox squirrel is almost twice as big as the cat squirrel. And he's a lot of different colors. Now they don't go like the, the cat squirrel does. The cat squirrel very fast on the ground. He kind of slow. He loves pine cones. He loves pecans. He will eat his whole diet of pecans if he's got a good pecan tree. But they, they have a long bushy tail, sharp toenails, so they can go up in the tree. But you won't see them jumping from limb to limb like the cat squirrel does. Animals with rabies. I'll try to guess what this is right quick. This is a raccoon. Every raccoon born is born with rabies in the brain. Not every one of them is going to get sick and try to bite you, but every one of them born is born with rabies in the brain. There's three ways you can get it. He can bite you. You can get rabies if he's sick. He can scratch you and you can get rabies if he's sick. Or if you get any blood off of him on you and he's sick, <clears throat> another animal that we have around here, is the coyote. Now, our coyotes are more of a butterscotch color. And he's got this long bushy tail that fell off because I'd love doing these teaching classes. And normally people get to touch the animals, but he just wore out and his tail fell off. His eyes are butterscotch yellow and they almost look like they're cross-sided. He looks like he's mean. He does have some toenails and he's got very sharp teeth. And when he calls his friends, he goes, oh, 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 and you know what they're actually saying? When they're calling their friends, they're saying, meet me, McDonald's, because they want to go get a McRabbit or a McRat or 
maybe a meat cat. It's all different kinds of things that they, they might want to eat. But normally, the coyotes like to hunt in pairs or packs. And that makes them more scared. They're sneaky. And, and they, they do help control the sick animals. Another animal that could have rabies is the fox. And yes, uh, he lost his tail too. But uh, we have two different foxes in Georgia. This is a gray fox. You see he's got a little bit of red on him and then gray. And we also have a red fox in Georgia that looks just like this one. He's got red and white, and a little bit of black on his tail. But in Georgia, they're real thin hair. And the, the fox is a real conniving little creature. He's a great hunter. He can sneak up on birds and capture them. And that's why we think that he shares more rabies than any other animal except for the raccoon. The fox is a canine and his sound is more like a dog. It's just a little whimper dog. It's a just a real short little bark. One of my favorites, looks like a cat. He's got freckles on his belly, a little bitty short tail. That, that's going to tell you what it is right there. It's a bobcat. And bobcats are neat little animals. If you've ever watched your cat catch a, a mouse or a lizard or something, and how they play with them, and they'll let them run a little bit, and then they'll jump on top of them and play with them, and then let them run. A bobcat will do the same thing. They have very, very sharp toenails. The neat thing about the bobcat is during the springtime, when they're looking for a girlfriend, they scream, and it sounds like you stumped on mama's big toe. Ah! But they, ooh, they're very vocal. And when they scream, it'll make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. It's a scary, scary scream. They love to hunt. They eat squirrels. They eat birds. They eat rats, rabbits. Pretty much whatever kind of meat they can get. All right. My favorite. Y'all don't know what that is, I'm sure. Never seen one. They smell like roses. They're so sweet. Yeah. I want to just carry them around and pet them all the time. But this is a skunk. And we have a lot of skunks. Anywhere you have large open fields, skunks like to live in those open fields. Not only does he like to live in the fields, he likes to live in the farmer's barn. And he'll go in that barn and kind of decorate it the way he likes it best. They're actually one of the sweetest animals in the woods. When you walk up on one, he'll turn around and wave hey at you. Um, but he's actually spraying this good little old stinky perfume. But I promise you, your teacher will let you stay out of school for two weeks if he sprays you. Mama will even let you sleep outside in the doghouse because the dog smells better than you do. They do protect themselves with their teeth. They got long toenails for digging. But this is his weapon. He will spray you. If you get the spray on you, you can take a bath in tomato sauce and it'll cut it. It won't make it go away. And these can carry rabies. So you've got to be very careful, careful with these. But you can tell when you go by, that's the awfulest stink you've ever smelled. <clears throat> this animal, we see dead on the side of the road all the time. It's called a possum, but they cannot get rabies. What did I say we got to have to get rabies? A brain? Well, I'm not saying he doesn't have a brain. It's a little brain, but he's got a brain. He don't use it like me sometimes. And the only way the, the biologists can tell us that they can't get a rabies is because they are marsupials. A marsupial is an animal with a pouch on its belly, like a kangaroo. And the mama will raise their young in her pouch until they get three inches long. And then she says, get out. And then they'll ride on her back for a while until they get so heavy, she says, you're killing me. And then they'll go on their own little way. But the neatest thing about them is how they protect themselves. They do have teeth. They got claws, but there's nothing to them. But the way they protect themselves, 
is they play dead. When they get scared, they just go over and roll over and just lay there. If the possum doesn't run, the dog don't want to play with it. He'll get it and shake a minute and say, run, run. And he doesn't run. The game is over, so they leave. About five minutes or so, he goes, oh, it's a good nap. I have never seen one hanging up like they do in the cartoons, hanging up on a tree, sleeping by the tail. Nah, I don't believe that. They will bite you, and they'll hiss at you, but their main protection is they fall asleep. George's birds. I have some wood ducks. The colorful one is the male. Dark green head, white along it, red on the nose. Pretty colors, got some pretty blue in him. And the female is kind of plain color. Now she's got some blue on her wings too with some white tips and white around her eyes where he doesn't. But he will actually in the water. And the mama, I've seen the mama do it the same thing. If they got babies and they're in a little creek, they'll get the babies under the bushes and whichever one's with them, get up and fly downstream a little bit and fall to the ground, into the water, just to get you to follow her down and then she'll fly back up to her babies. A wood duck makes a whistle. It'll go. <coughs> when you hear it flying but they don't have their nest on the ground. They actually live in a tree, in a hole in the tree. And they'll fly and they'll be coming in towards that tree and it's like an airplane. So, and when they get close to the tree, they turn their wings down, duck their head and go straight in that hole like a bullet. But now the mallard duck, and this is a male. He's got all of his pretty colors but uh, they live in a nest on the ground. The mallard has a distinct call. If you've ever been around a white duck, maybe at a little uh, pond at a park or something, they'll go. <laughs> or it can be a deeper call. But that's, a, that's what a mallard sounds like. And that female builds them a little nest on the ground and she stays with the nest and the male will go around and try to run them off. Pretty neat little old animals. Now, my favorite bird that I like to talk about the most. If you see my pictures on the wall, you can probably tell what we're going to, but we're going to the turkey, the Eastern turkey. And this is a tail, well, we have two tail fans. And it's neat about the turkey, you can tell the age of a turkey up to six months by the tail fans. These are the baby feathers and these are the adult feathers. The long ones start growing and they'll take over the short baby feathers until they all equal out to be long feathers, that's your adult. But uh, this is a Jake, means a young turkey, six months old or less. This is a Tom, he's an adult turkey. This is the Tom turkey wing, and you see it's mainly black tipped. Well, this is a hen turkey, and it's it's hard to see it on the, the screen right here, but it's black and then it, on the very tips, of the black is brown. Well, it's kind of hard to see that in the distance, right? So you can't tell if it's a tom or a hen by looking at these feathers at a long distance. One of the ways to tell if it's a tom or a hen is by looking at its head. A tom will have, when he gets excited and starts gobbling, he'll have a white punk hairdo, be white and short. And then he's got a red bow tie, well actually, actually is waddle, but he's got a nose, a snoot, and it will grow and it'll get long and it'll shrink up when he gets scared. But he's colorful. The hen, again, just like the, the ducks, is kind of a buff brown color, where the tom has the prettier colors. With your binoculars, you can see the spur. 
Now the female <clears throat> has pretty legs, no spur. Brother Tom has a spur. He uses that spur to fight with. When another Tom and him's fighting for the girl, they'll jump up and when they're doing it, they're clawing each other. They'll lock their heads. It's funny, they'll lock their heads around each other like we're doing when we're arm wrestling. And then they jump in the air and their wings are flopping and those feet are just going at each other and they're trying to cut each other up with these spurs. Now, this is the Jake, the six month bird. He's got a little bitty nub, about a quarter of an inch. This is a two year old bird. He's got a three quarter of an inch spur. If it's an inch, it's three years old. If it's an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, that's gonna be four years old. But they're pretty neat. Now you, you notice this Jake's legs are about the same length. So the legs don't grow anymore after a while and they're long toes. But look at the hen. She got short legs. Her feet are even smaller. You can tell the difference between a tom in a hen, a boy and a girl in a walking down a sandy road by looking at the size of the feet. The fun part is making all the noises that the turkey makes. <laughs> we have um, a box call and we have a slate call. And I like this, this is a diaphragm. You put it in your mouth and I'm gonna let it get wet a minute while I talk. And you, you're making noises with it. Now the turkey is the smartest bird in the woods. He can see, he's got excellent eyesight, but this is what a, a hen turkey sounds like. And the neat thing about the turkey, is when they have their babies in the nest, when the mama gets up and she starts walking, those babies will line up on her and follow like a little train. They're right there with her. At night, she will open her wings up and all those babies run right up underneath her and hold on more or less, and she cuddles them with her feathers because at night, if it gets cool and the dew that drips, you've walked through the yards first thing in the morning and got your shoes all wet, if it gets on those baby turkeys, the pokes, it will kill them. They'll die of pneumonia that night. So she will call them to get them to come with her. And it's a real high pitch. Let's see if I can do it today. And she'll do that high pitch and she'll start walking off. Now, I use a 35 millimeter film canister and I made a turkey call. And the tom turkey he will yelp and he'll cluck, he'll cluck, he'll go. And a yep. It's a deeper throat voice. But what do we know him for? For gobbling. And he'll gobble. Okay, we're gonna put a turkey tube call together. There's four basic parts. You've got the canister, the lid, a rubber band, and glove. All right, so the biggest thing is, after it's been cut, you'll see that there's a groove here, half a moon, and then there's no groove but an open hole on the other half of the moon. That's gonna be very important when we start putting it on the glove. So you take the glove, and it's fun. You'll chase it around a little bit. And you want to get it on there about halfway. Then you take the cap and you want the part that does not have the inner lip on it to go over the glove part. The other part will go over the open part. So you kind of just, and it's easy to start on one corner. And as you go down, slide it around so that the glove does not go under the lip. If the glove goes under the lip, this make him slide around a little bit. You'll see a big gap in it. And see it pinches it. So there's a big opening and it won't make the sound. So we're gonna do it one more time. Just take your glove and slide it. 
Start on one corner with the, the in, inlay. You get it right on the edge of the glove. Start going around, walk it around, and make sure that it does not get under the glove. All right, now I got a little wide spot right there, but when you start tightening it up, it will probably still open up again anyway. So after you get it tight, you take a rubber band, and I like to go ahead and loop it. It's, it it'll still pop it off if you're not careful. But get it over the cap, because it's gonna hold the glove in position. I kind of like to keep it up close to the top. Oops. And sometimes you will do this. It means you start all over. And this is hard. I mean, it, it takes a little practice. But you've got to get it perfect. So what you do, it's, it's, it's easy. You just take it back apart. Lock it in again. Come all the way around. It's got to have a gap. If you don't have a gap, it'll be a real, real high squeal. Let's see if we can do this better this time. There we go. We're staying closer to the top. That's a lot better. See, I got a gap in there. It's got to have that gap to blow. All right. Now, we're going to learn how to make some noise with it. Now, if you look at this tube, it's got holes in the side and a big hole in the bottom and then the hole at the top. What you're going to do is you, if you'll turn it upside down so that the glove hangs down, you want to put your hand above those holes. If you put it on the hose, it's not going to make the sound. So you want to get your hand above the holes and then lay the glove back on top of your hand. Now, where this slit is right here, you want that to go on your bottom lip. And then you just blow. Just try to make any kind of noise. That's the beginning. Now you're using your bottom lip to touch on the glove right here. And it'll tickle. If, especially if you don't have it tight enough. I really need to go a little bit tighter. So you pull the edges. But you got to be careful because you can pull too hard and you'll pull the whole thing out. And you start over again. That's the good part about being able to start all over again. All right, let's see. All right. Now, once you can make a noise, just make a noise, then you want to say took. That's the, the cluck, took. Now, to make the yelp, remember that, It's almost like saying, yep, 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 yep. Now, to make the gobble, you're going to go, tuka, 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 just speed your tooks up. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, the tube call sounds more like the tom because it's a little deeper. It's not real high pitched like the, the diaphragm was, but it's a, your, your cluck, your yelp, and then your gobble.